Now, in my culture, we talk about a bird's eye view. Do you have such a saying? You know, you get a, a, a view like a bird has above, high above. Some birds fly really high like the eagle, uh, over a thousand feet, a uh, thousand meters even above the surface, many uh, several feet above the earth. And the higher you get up, the more you can see. You can see the big picture. You can see which way the river is going to go and where it's going to flow into the sea. You can see the heights of the mountains and what's at the top of the mountains and down below. And you get this uh, panoramic bird's eye view of everything versus if you're bowed down and looking simply at the sands in front of your feet. God wants us to have a bird's eye view. In fact, God wants something better than a bird's eye view. He wants us to have God's eye view. One of the verses that depicts true rest is this one from Psalm 46, the 10th verse. I hear it again and again. Be still and know that I am God. But all too often people stop there. Just be still and know that God is God. The rest of the verse says, I will be exalted among the nations. Exalted. I am above the nations. The nations seem ever so great. So terrifying in this day and age of riots in so many countries in the Middle East. Such unrest among peoples on our, on our world or globe today. I will be exalted in the earth. This is God's view. Be still. I am still God. Elijah, be still. I am still God. I am in control. I haven't slept away uh, my times and lost perspective. Come up and see things from my point of view. And the more we read the Bible and understand it, the higher our view becomes. The more we seek God's presence and ask him to give us his perspective and enjoy his presence, our view will be above the people who panic and lose heart and despair. But every once in a while we need a little lift, a help to get God's point of view, God's eye view. That's what he wants us to have. And eventually we see that Elijah gains not only God's point of view, but he gains God in entirety, entirety, entirety as he is taken up into the heavens fully on a chariot of fire. Here is another verse. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of a heart, my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. We want our thoughts and our words and our perspective to be pleasing. Rest, the pleasure of gaining his perspective. He wants us to share his view. And he says, come on up and see my view. Come on up to the mountaintops. Come on up, though you be stuck in a valley or even a prison, you can have the mind of God and see the big picture. Another passage in, in scripture uh, that is an example of a lost perspective that is then gained by the end of the psalm. In Psalm 73, 25, we read, Whom have I in heaven but you, referring to the Lord, and earth has nothing I desire besides you. Now that's a God's eye view. I have you in heaven and there's nothing on earth that really satisfies me besides you. But Asaph, the psalmist who wrote this during the time of Solomon begins his uh, psalm in despair and, and he says, I, I've lost heart. And he goes through the phases from verse 1 through 25 or 26. He goes through these phases of having lost heart, lost his perspective to gaining it as he thinks about God and God brings him, he delivers him from that lost perspective at the beginning of the psalm and then he finds it in God and is elevated in his view by the end. It's a great example of someone who lost perspective, much like John the Baptist, much like Elijah. Again, it happens again and again where we become discouraged and we lose God's view. 
but by rest. Rest, as Elijah experienced it, was one of the tools used of God to get the right perspective again. It's very important. It's not the only thing. You might be lacking the necessities of good sleep. Maybe it's been a long time for whatever reason you've slept well. You haven't slept well. Maybe your diet, you aren't eating what you should be eating. That could play into a loss of perspective and discouragement as well. But maybe it's uh, you've surrounded yourself day and night with people and you have to get away, even from your children, to get a little peace of mind away from the constant motion of little people running and walking in around you. And maybe it's the crowd. You are always with people because you're a people person. But you need a break. Even as a people person, you need a break and you need solitude with him. Augustine, the great theologian, said, Thou hast made us for thyself, and our souls are restless until they find their rest in thee, in God. I want to just tell you another instance when I lost perspective. It was when I came into the job with pastors that I now have, and I have another job as well, and that is I'm a chaplain for a trucking company. And at this particular time, my mother had become very ill. She wasn't expected to live, but she had a surgery, and she survived the th surgery, but she didn't seem to be very well, and my brother and my sister, we would have meetings. What should we do? Should we have the surgery? We decide to have the surgery. What should we do? Um, she has feeding tubes. Should she, uh, she, she always have these tubes? And, and uh, it was September, uh, and it came and went, and we didn't think she would live through September, but she did. But then there were other trips to the hospital and complications in October, and we didn't think she'd live through October, but she did. And then there was November. Will she live through November? By the end of the November, we thought, you know, I think our mother's going to survive. Well, that was eight years ago, and, and she's 92 now. But uh, we didn't know the outcome. It became, became something that took our energy, took our time, hard decisions with the doctors and so forth. Uh, but that wasn't all. I mentioned that I was a chaplain with a trucking company. All of a sudden, it seemed that truck drivers were dying of heart attacks and a couple of accidents, and I was going to funerals all the time. You know, and funerals can really, really wear on you. Going to funerals is so sad. And then dealing with the family members, the new widows, and so forth. And that found that discouraging. And, and then uh, it was just about Christmas. And there were a couple of things that were discouraging about Christmas that particular year. And finally, it was the day after Christmas. And we were getting ready to go to church. And uh, I went downstairs, and we have two dogs, and they're in a certain room. And before I got to the room, I smelled something awful. Oh, no. Our dog, our older dog, was 15 years old. That means that she was about 90 years old in human years. And she was losing control of her bowels. You understand? Do I need to say anything more? Oh, no. And I'm going to be late for church, but I've got to clean this up. And I was down scrubbing and cleaning it out. And, and then I thought about, this dog has been the friend of our children. We helped, uh, this dog helped us raise these children of ours. And we have so many wonderful memories. Are we going to have to put the dog down soon? Oh, no. My heart began to sink about that. I don't want to put the dog down. Oh, but this is such a mess. How much? And so my heart was heavy. I go to church, and I'd ask someone to do a favor for me. And, uh, uh, and this person said, I'm sorry, but I just can't do that for you. And I felt, oh. You know, uh, I ask so little of other people, and I do so much for so many people. 
I do so much for the truck drivers. I do so much for ministers. I do things for dogs. I do things for pastors. I do things, I do things. Can't this person at least once come through for me? I didn't want to talk to anybody at church. I wasn't preaching that Sunday. I said, Lois, come on, let's go home. And I sat and stewed all afternoon, feeling sorry for myself. I'd lost perspective. It happens. Until I, okay, met with God. Okay, it's my mother, but she's okay. Okay, God will have to help comfort those who have lost loved ones. Well, our dog is in God's hands. And yes, perhaps this year we have to put her down. She's having to suffer. Okay, well, someone didn't do the favor I asked, but I'll live through it. I'll make it. Okay. So in solitude, I reversed my decisions. I began to feel at peace with God. I began to rise up and again have some buoyancy, we could say, and rise above the pits of despair and gain the perspective God wants. And he takes pleasure in that. Are you going to be sucked down? Yes, you are. Events, hardships, deaths, injury, sicknesses, all pull us down. But the person who comes to God and rests in him rises up again and again. Don't forget solitude, away and rest is a key to survival and thriving in this life. Amen. Have you benefited from our teaching ministry? Have you found TVS videos helpful and relevant? Please consider supporting us with your prayers and financial gifts. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com.